incidentally, by the same guy, I think, who wrote the other one we love, Holy Now. Yeah. Is that Peter Mayer? Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> so, uh, most of us of a certain age remember a Bruce Springsteen song called Glory Days. Yes? He, he's essentially talking about the tendency that some people have to live in their glory days when life seemed easier or more successful or kinder. It's often a cliche that's attributed to like the football, high school football star, the prom queen, who are reliving those times when everything seemed to be going their way, right? In fact, here are the lyrics. I just, I, I wanted to share it with you. We talked about having Amy sing it, but okay. So imagine Bruce Springsteen is singing this, okay? I'm just going to say it, but imagine that he's singing it. I had a friend who was a big ball player back in high school. He could throw that speedball by you, make you look like a fool boy. Saw him the other night at the local bar, or at the roadside bar. I was walking in, he was walking out. We went back, went back inside, sat down, had a few drinks, but all he kept talking about was glory days. Well, they'll pass you by glory days in the wink of a young girl's eye. Glory days. Glory days. Now, please don't get me wrong when I'm talking about this. Having pleasant memories, having fun thoughts about times gone by, about the good times, is a very enjoyable part of living this human life. We have memory for a reason. And part of the reason we have memory is so that we can recall the things that helped make us who we are. That makes sense? So we can remember back that's part of who we are. So all of us have our version of our glory days, a particular time in our past when we, when we recall it, we feel that sense of comfort, that sense of joy, and that sense of happiness. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is normal and it is natural to recall those past pleasant memories and reflect on them. In fact, when we were doing our appreciative inquiry process just yesterday, um, uh, what, we went, what we did was we, we started out by remembering a favorite time here at the center when things were the most alive for us, when things were the most joyful for us. And then, with, with those happy memories kind of providing the foundation upon which to build, we went about designing new ideas and new projects that will move us forward as a spiritual community. So it was a really healthy way of utilizing the past, our glory days, to help propel us into our next expression. However, sometimes remembering our glory days get us into trouble because they block us from moving forward. Is anybody relating to this at all? In other words, we're so busy reliving the past that we aren't participating right here in the present. And we're not working on creating an equally as enjoyable future. Because basic metaphysics will teach us that what we are thinking about and what we are focusing on right now is giving birth to our future reality. I want you to think about that for a minute. What you are thinking about right now is planting the seeds for your future reality. You. <laughs> Sometimes, right? <laughs> so if we're always looking back and we're wishing for things to be the way they were, we aren't enjoying this present moment, which is the only moment there is. And if we're not available to create new glory days, if we're spending all our time reliving our past glory days. It, yeah, Edie Perkel, who was married to Paul Simon FX, I, I just loved this quote. She said, I hope I'm better today than I was yesterday. 
I don't believe in glory days or anything like that. So I think the best is tomorrow or later this afternoon. <laughs> because here's the interesting thing, folks. And you know what? You know how I tell you sometimes uh, I, I do talks for me and then you guys just get to listen? This is one of those. Sometimes I do it for you. It's like, you really need to learn this. But in this, <laughs> in this case, it's I really need to learn this, okay? So here's the thing about glory days is that chances are the glory days that we're holding on to were probably not all that glory filled. <laughs> it's just that the edges have worn off over time, right? And we're seeing them through the, the soft veil of memory as opposed to the sharp process of being in the present. You know, right, everything right now is like, boom, right? But in the memory, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. That was so good. But the truth is, there are probably just as many challenges and just as many anxieties and just as many upsets back there in the glory days as they are right now. It's just that the memories have been softened over time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a personal example right now. I have, I, I, I want to tell you that I hesitated doing this. Uh, and maybe you'll know why in, in a little bit. I hesitated about this and I just decided to go ahead and do it because my life is a book, open book, right? So uh, since coming here to Canada, I have had some challenges. Uh, I've had immigration issues. I've had tax issues ongoing. I've had housing issues where I basically got kicked out of the apartment that I loved and had to buy a house, but then I couldn't get a mortgage because, um, because I didn't have Canadian credit. So then the, what the bank said, well, here, well, yeah, sure, you can get Canadian credit. We'll give you a, a mortgage if you find a co-signer. <laughs> I'm 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, there's just been some stuff, right? And it's been very puzzling to me because I came here with the best of intentions. I really believe that this is the next step of my soul's evolution and my, me as a minister and me as a person. So needless to say, there's times when I've been feeling blindsided by the universe. More than once, I thought, what the hell? <laughs> I did everything right. I did everything I teach, right? I, I, I took a risk. I stepped out on faith. I followed the path. I prayed. How come this is so hard? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. You all know I love you, right? <laughs> And you know that I love being here, but sometimes, oh my goodness. So I'm just sharing this insight with you, right? My life is my message. So, so the other day I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, sometimes I miss the good old days in ministry where it seemed like everything I touched turned to gold. My center was growing by leaps and bounds. I was an up-and-coming young minister. Yes, I was young once. I was an up-and-coming young minister. I was the featured speaker at our national conferences. I sat on all these important committees. I hung up with the big wigs. Yeah, yeah, everything. You know, I had it going on. And I said, I feel in some ways like they were my glory days. I said this, honest to goodness. And yet the truth is, there were struggles back then, too. There were growing pains, there were financial challenges, there were uh, politics in the organization. I had relationship issues then, too. <laughs> <laughs> I lost both my parents in those times, right? So when I look back on that, through that softer lens of time, what happens is that they appear to be happier and more pleasant than they probably were. 
just as I will someday look back on the challenges that I've had here, and they will have softened with time, and I'll be able to see the growth that came as a result of it. Because if we don't grow through times of challenge, and instead stay stuck in our memories of when times were good, we're not evolving spiritually. And we all know that spiritual growth and spiritual evolution is the reason we're here. It's the reason we're having this human experience. We are here to grow. We are here to evolve, to grow our consciousness, to bring us closer to realizing our own divine nature. So I found this other quote by Seth Shostak, who is a um, scientist. And he wrote this, progress is founded on an accumulation of knowledge through experience. We are to build on the past rather than endlessly relive it. That's what separates us from the beasts. So back to my aha moment. Here I'm whining to my friend. I do that sometimes. I do, I do. And she reflected back to me that perhaps part of the supposed challenges that I was having here were because I was trying to recreate the good old days. That maybe, maybe, I was unconsciously doing what David Gilmore wrote about when he said, it's, very, it's a very tempting thing to try and relive your glory days when you get a little older and you worry that people have forgotten all about you. Because the truth is, I'm not the young up-and-coming minister anymore. The fact is, I'm considered one of the elders after 18 years of doing this. And since those glory days of my ministry, many things have changed. I've changed, certainly. The organization has changed. Even our metaphysical movement has changed. Let me tell you about what I mean by that. When I started in ministry, the internet was just on, just coming, right? It was just on the scene. There was no Oprah, there was no Deepak, there was no Soul Food Sunday, there was no Louise Hay, there weren't millions of YouTube videos of people sharing spiritual messages. In those days, we were it. <laughs> we were it. No wonder everything we touched turned to gold. But we don't live in those times anymore. And trying to recreate something new out of something old doesn't work. So yes, we still have our memories. Oh yeah, I remember when that happened and when that worked really well. We have those things because they're part of who we are. They're valuable and they have great wisdom and great insight. Just like Amy's song, they're the gold that's going through the bowl, right? Those memories are, and used in a very healthy way, our memories are the building blocks for new ideas, for new ways of being, for new opportunities. But not if we stay stuck in what was. Because it doesn't make room for what is and for what can be. So that come, brings us to the crux of today's talk. One of my all-time favorite Ernest Holmes quotes is, principle is not bound by precedent. Principle is not bound by precedent. What he means is, just because something used to be a certain way doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. And it also means that just because something has never been a certain way doesn't mean it can't be. In other words, principle, which is a fancy word for God, or a fancy word for the universe, or whatever you want to call it, principle is not bound to what used to be. And it's not bound to what never could be. 
Can you imagine a hundred years ago, people think if, even imagining the technology that we use nowadays? Imagine the kind of lives that we live right now. Principle is not bound by precedent. It is absolutely limitless. It is limitless potential. It is limitless possibility. But many of us go through life, sorry. Many of us go through life and we use the same tools and we have the same thoughts and we have the same memories and we have the same ideas. And so we don't understand why we feel stuck. But if we want to live a life that is more loving, that is more prosperous, that's healthier and happier and ever expanding, we have to give up searching for what was and instead start creating what is in the here and now. Because that here and now, that is the point of creation right now. It wasn't the past and it's not the future. In fact, Dr. Holmes said it this way. We are living in a timeless universe. And the fact is that as far as the infinite is concerned, everything exists to it as a present reality, bound neither by the past nor by the future. Rather, life is something that is eternally made new. Yeah. But if we insist on holding to the past in some mistaken belief that we can recreate it, nothing new can happen. So I'm going to summarize the points that I made here. I was going to put it up on the screen, but like I said, I'm a little under the weather, so it just didn't happen. So tune in, okay? You tuned in? Am I making sense today? <laughs> Okay, so to summarize, number one, enjoy your memories. Enjoy your memories because they are part of who you are. And they provide you with important data and important information and history. Our present life is built on that foundation. So yay for memory, right? Yay? Yay. 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 Thank you. Recognize, this is the second point, recognize that who you are right now is different than when the memories happened. Who you are now is different than when the memories happened. So it's important for us to upgrade, to sharpen our skills, to sharpen who we are, to recognize that all of this wisdom and all of this knowledge that came with the memories is present here for us, but we need to use them to progress and to evolve. We have to recognize that where we are right now, I just said that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you laughing at me, Wayne? I, I got frequency. I got frequency. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So, <laughs> so we need to release our attachment to holding on to that. Because trying to relive, trying to recreate our present doesn't work. And finally, we need to continue to do our work right here in this present moment. In other words, to plant the seeds of what it is that we do want into this fertile soil of the present moment. Is this making sense? And then, here's the good news. Those seeds that we are planting will contain some of the attributes of our glory days. Because they're part of who we are. But there's a difference between affirming attributes and trying to recreate the past. But those seeds that we are planting are who we are, and that contains our glory days. So how wonderful is it that we can have the aspects of the life that we loved before implanted into a whole package, a whole new appearance, a whole new way of being. So I love this quote by Rob Lowe, the actor. He said, I have a lot of great memories, but I can't imagine anything more exciting 
than the life I have now. Let that sink in. I have a lot of great memories. I know it was Rob Lowe, but I just loved her. I have a lot of great memories, but I can't imagine anything more exciting than the life I have now. Because the truth is, these are our glory days right now. Because they're, they're ones that we are living right here, right now. And that's the only time there is. So that's all I have to say about that. I'm signing off, and so it is. <laughs>